here is Anatol again and here we see Mauser which is a very useful website for selecting components and navigating and uh, choosing different ranges whatever <laughs> it's very helpful but unfortunately all of this data you cannot really visu visualize it and um, yeah, it becomes at some point un uh, uncomfortable and this is where Python can come in useful so if we download all of this data or at least some part of it and organize it in a table uh, using pandas environment in Python we can also make different plots and visualize the data like for example here we see the scatter plot which shows us uh, RDS on and uh, ID uh, drain current of uh, silicon MOSFETs or silicon carbide MOSFETs and also the size shows the gate charge and basically this information is enough to compare the losses which can be uh, generated by different devices or we can look at something like this so this is a swarm plot which shows us uh, VTS and also the price for different devices depending on the technology or we can also put here current, RTS, or whatever. So the first thing uh, we need to do is uh, we need to download the CSV data. And unfortunately, uh, with Mauser, each page shows only up to 25 values. And then we have to download each page. Of course, with Python and uh, models like Beautiful Soup or uh, GUI, uh, Python auto GUI, I think it is possible to optimize the download, but it's a little bit messy. So here I have uh, 67 pages downloaded and uh, it gives us more than 1000 uh, rows, 1000 entries of data. So let's just uh, put this uh, into our Python. So for this I will need OS module and for now let's uh, use pandas of course later we'll need some plotting uh, capabilities like matplotlib or seaborn but uh, we'll start with this so I would like to change the uh, working directory and uh, yeah, I need double slashes here and if I list directory I will see a lot of data so I think for this example, at least for this video, we can work only with the first one. So we'll just say that file is this. And I will import it uh, into a variable called data. So to work with pandas and import uh, CSV data, I just use a command to read CSV. And here I need to provide the name so I can write file plus CSV. Okay, the file is imported and now I can work with it. So first uh, I want to do, I want to take a look at how this data looks like. So I can use the command or method called uh, head, which will show us the first five rows of the data. So we'll see one, two, three, four, five. Uh, of course we can change it. We can make it only two or we can make it 20, but yeah, let's use the default value and or let's use just two and a similar method it is called tail and it shows us the last two rows of the data so the first thing we can see here that uh, it has a lot of rows and basically we see this uh, three dots here which uh, explains that there are more columns that uh, it can show us here actually show it says that we have 27 columns and um, some of the namings or uh, headers they're not really mm, I don't like them for example yeah I don't need uh, definitely don't need uh, mouse or part number I think part number from the manufacturer is enough and uh, yeah maybe data sheet is not needed pricing I would call it price and uh, something like VGS, gate source voltage, I would also call it only VGS. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we don't see some of the columns. What we can do, we can use info method to give some information. So it gives us all of the 
columns it has and then uh, how much memory this data takes and so on so something like VTS drain source breakdown voltage I would like to use it just VTS so the first thing we can do is uh, yeah maybe we just rename some of them and for renaming uh, we can use the method called rename and here we specify that we want to rename columns okay here we'll have to provide the dictionary and the dictionary is a kind of array which uh, uh, helps you to navigate both the key and the value so here we can specify that uh, we want to rename where was it VDS to just VTS and then let's do the same for ITS on for ID and for now for price okay so um, ID is something also very long RTS on as well and price as far as I remember it was pricey okay the line is too long so maybe we can also separate it in several um, yeah manufacture part number we can also call it part manufacturer let's call it vendor okay so we see that now some of it changed and if I call it once again nothing changes so what we can do we can assign it reassign it that data equals rename data and now we see that it changed and um, maybe I can also provide some masks some filtering to show me the columns I actually need and let's call it well columns or needed calls and let's put here vendor part price VTS IT ITS on and here in columns square columns we'll just put needed calls so now it shows the information we actually need for now for this video and uh, what we can see right away that there are some useless things so I don't really need this and maybe this and uh, definitely this so I want to use this as uh, float floating point uh, digits so I can use different uh, mathematical operations different analysis and for this we need to uh, modify each row so now let's go to the next one so I can access the price here and use different string operators or string methods for this I will put comma and I uh, use string and yeah, let's do it like this and maybe in the next row we'll do the string action there are several things we can do so first of all we can make split and say that split with I don't know, like this and it gives us array everything that comes before this sign and everything that comes after or maybe yeah so if I use zero or no string zero it gives us sequels if I use one it gives us everything remaining so basically I can use something like this and then split it again with with a space and use the first um, string first again so like this I can uh, take out or extract the number I actually need but you see I need uh, to keep a lot of methods here 
didn't uh, nest them. So it's not really a good option. Another option is uh, to use uh, a command or a method which is called... Now let me go to the next one. which is called remove prefix and let's see okay so i remove this prefix or i can remove something like this and i can apply the same or similar command called remove suffix and in the suffix i can put space euro sign and yeah so what I can do now with it, I can also do another string operation called replace and replace uh, this sign with this. And the last thing, I can convert it to another type which would be float. And we can see that now this is all floating point and the price of all of the components we have in this table we can sum it. Or we can say describe. Oh, describe would be. So, yeah, mean would be this, standard this, minimum this, uh, maximum this, and so on. Okay, so it definitely works. Let's go back here. But there is even better method. So, what we need to do if we go back. We just need to say that we want to extract exactly this part. So everything uh, that has to do with numbers, with digits, and with comma. And everything else we don't need. And in Pandas there is a method to do so. It is called extract. The problem here is that we need to know how to use something called regular expressions. And regular expressions is a, a little bit complicated way to work with the text and navigate and find some patterns in text. So maybe uh, you can find a lot of videos about regular expressions and how to use them. Here I can just say that uh, what we can do, we need to put some brackets and everything that comes into these brackets we can extract for example if you put one here we extract everything that has ones if i put two here we extract everything that has twos but uh, yeah doesn't extract anything else we can say that uh, i want to extract for example equal sign or i want to extract everything oops um yeah, uh, this one, I want to extract everything but just first symbol, and if I put a star here, asterisk, I will extract absolutely everything. Or, um, I want to extract a digit. I want to extract all digits. No, doesn't work. I want to extract digit and column. And again, digit. Like this. all digits before a comma and all digits af after the comma and space for example but that's a lot so i say that i want to extract a digit or several digits in a row then a comma and then again several uh, digits in a row and then a space but if i check what was originally there i just need to say that i want to extract everything except for this part and this part for except for everything uh, before or uh, yeah before this point and after space so as i said before that everything that we put here in the brackets we do extract so i can say any symbol and everything but everything that goes outside of brackets before or after we don't so if i put equal sign here we see that equal sign is not extracted and okay if i put this one if uh, this apostrophe is here it's also not extracted or like this or maybe like this or maybe if i put the backslash and s which means space that's it so i just need to say that i want to extract everything except for this coming before and this afterwards 
and it's done. So the only thing I, uh, I have left is to um, replace and make comma here and convert it to floating point. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah, what didn't work? Something didn't work. What didn't work? Why didn't work? Yes, now I see. So this extract method that gives us another data frame, it's not an array. So we just need to take the first column and then repeat everything again. Replace and convert. Okay, so if we say price in euro, for example, and now make head, uh, not head, let's do mm, price euro. Now we see the price, and then we can do the same uh, operations. Let's do the same, but IT, for example, current. So we can do the same here, or data IT, string extract, regular expressions, and oops, maybe here also, space. Okay, and now let's I, uh, we don't even need to replace it here because it's original already like this. Let's type load data it amps and now we can plot it. Okay, maybe yeah, let's it amps. And Y would be price euro. And maybe line weights equals zero. And marker round. So that's good enough. Of course, there are several problems. Okay, so you can ask me what happens if. Uh, we have milliamps originally, but then we just uh, take milliamps or MA out and then uh, it gives us something. For example, this one is supposed to be 45 milliamps, but then we convert it to amps. Um, yeah, we need to do some filtering, but I guess it's better to show it in the next video.